Greetings, Earthlings. <laughs> Hola, people. Um, today, obviously, we're doing a little review show, uh, coffee and cards, because that's two of our favorite things. Uh, today, we are Deviant Witchery, and we are here with Scarlet from Scarlet's Cauldron and Melissa the Dreadful Mystic, and we're going to have a lot of fun talking about our favorite coffees. Um, and cards. Oh, my gosh, the cards are going to be fun. So... The first thing we are going to speak on is, it's from Calder, Caliber Coffee, uh, and I have to say, before we talk about the, the uh, coffee, is the company is super fucking funny. Like, I don't know how they found our first video that we did, um, but they sent an email and they said, you know, basically thank you for, for the review, but in the email, I can't even remember what uh, they said, but... They were funny. Like, just their comment, I don't know. I appreciate humor and a company who takes time to connect with, you know, people who use their products and have humor. I'll keep shopping there for sure. Um, but, so we are trying, shit, 357 Mag Dark Roast. We tried that one. Yum yum, and <laughs> and we tried coffee bukaki. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, so we will discuss the three fifty seven mag right now. And how did y'all uh, like it? I love it. It is really good. It is super smooth. I really enjoy the darkness of it, the dark roast. To me, I was telling uh, Michael and Scarlett earlier that it has almost a smoky flavor to it that is super yummy. Um, I really like it. I didn't think it was going to be as smooth. That's what really kind of shocked me because it's so dark, and a lot of times dark coffees are kind of rough. <clears throat> and this was so smooth. It doesn't. It doesn't taste as harsh as those dark coffees, and I like it. Yeah. Scarlet, how do you like it? What do you think about three fifty seven Mag Dark Rose Caliber Coffee? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um. I was in for a bit of surprise because um, when I got it, I got it from Michael, and it was in baggies, the block baggies, so I didn't get to see the cover, I didn't get to read it, so I was going into this coffee blindly, and all I could do was just rely on my senses, and when I opened up that baggie and I smelt it, it has a strong aroma and it made me think, oh, my God, this is going to be some really harsh coffee. Right. It's going to be really strong. I'm not going to like it. So I gave it a chance anyway, and I brewed it, and it smelled, it smelled good. It didn't smell overbearing or anything while it was brewing. And then when I poured it, I always look at the color when I pour. <laughs> and it was darker than other coffees. And I was like, oh, man, <laughs> I'm really not going to like this. Well, before I put my creamer and sugar in, you know, I tasted it because I like to do that at least, even though I don't like black coffee. But it was not anywhere overbearing as I thought it was going to be. Mm. And I could not put my finger on the taste, like the, the spices or whatever that was in it. I couldn't put my finger on it, but I knew that there was something in it. And then Melissa of what was in it and as you know that makes total sense <laughs> and it's a really good coffee it's really smooth like it's shocking to me that it was as smooth as it was it's not overbearing it's it's smooth and almost like refreshing yeah that's mm -hmm. funny because no, it's I like, like it I like it a lot yeah, I'm like, well, well, we're finding out this company are smooth talkers. Uh, no, um, but the and the flavor is in the coffee. Let's. I did that on purpose. Like, I, I think I sent. Um, so we could all try it out. I sent uh, Scarlett a bag, and then I sent her coffee in 
uh, sealed baggie, and then I did the same thing for mm-hmm. Melissa, like sent her a bag and then a sealed bag. Um, so that helps you know <laughs> test it out, see what you rely on besides you know the looks of something. Um, I was kind of, but I like I like black coffee, but I was like kind of apprehensive because. Sometimes, like, really dark coffee tastes like shit from the ashtray. Like, it is harsh, and it is nasty. Um, so the scent of the 357 mag was nice, but it was very um, very distinct and very potent. And I'm like, uh-oh, this is going to be... I'm going to need a lot of sugar. Uh, and I don't like to put a lot of sugar in my coffee. Um, but then I made it, and, of course, I, I taste it just like, you know... Scarlet, like before, but anything else in there, I'll taste it. And uh, the scent was nice, um, and it wasn't as strong. The, the interesting thing I was just saying to them was, it, it has a very sharp like flavor. It, it hits you, but it's smooth at the same time. That's kind of like my, I guess my word for so far all the products I've tried by this company is they have this way of blending and creating like a smooth, um, you know, taste. So it can be strong, uh, but it's also, like, it's nice. Um, And so I'm going to read you a little bit about this coffee. It says, it's a blend of hard bean coffees roasted hot and long until most of their essential oils rise to the surface. The flavors are milk chocolate, uh, roasted walnuts, roasted nuts, and spice. Um, So that's interesting. Uh, And comparing it to the other... Because I think when I got it, I first, of course, I first tried the uh, the other coffee. Um, this one definitely packs more punch. It, it, it wakes you up in a way, in a, in a different way. Um, but it, it it gives you that more alert feeling, and it's not as mild. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely gets you up and going, and that's what I like. Uh, it does. It does. I, that's what I like about it too. And I'm not like an over like I'm sort of sensitive to caffeine, um, and I don't like the whole heart palpitation, like feeling like my eyes are about to shake out of my head. I <laughs> love that feeling. <laughs> and this doesn't do that, but it's still you are you are awake. You're ready to go. You know, um, like I was so dragging ass this morning. I did not want to get out of bed. I didn't want to do anything. I was so glad that um, my love made coffee for me this morning because <laughs> yeah. I don't think I would have been able to function. <laughs> but, uh, and this coffee is perfect because you're like up, ready to go. It's like, all right, I can face the day now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think. Um it does do that, and it's not, it doesn't make you, like, you know, all erratic and, like, crazy and shit, uh, but what it does is, like, you're right, it, it wakes that, you know, feeling up, you get that energy, but it is um, not crazy or overwhelming, uh, and, and I wasn't sure that I was, you know, like, okay, I'm really fucking tired, obviously today, but when I first tried it, I'm like, I need something to pick me up, so I made it, I'm like, okay, this better work, and I, it was smooth, I'm like, oh, great, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Nope, it's working. It's it, yep, fuck, it's working. I have energy. I'm I'm not like crazy, but I'm doing my shit, and I didn't really notice it until I started getting shit done. I'm like, okay, this is a good coffee. It gives me, it gives you plenty of energy, but not over the top energy. Right. So. Oh. Um, but that leads us into uh, our wonderful coffee bukkake. Can you say that again? Can you repeat that for me? <laughs> bukkake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm like, I was ignorant to what the word actually meant. Yeah, so was I. <laughs> so was I. <laughs> Thank the gods for... Uh, Miss Melissa's husband, because he's a knower of all things. Apparently. <laughs> so. And, and you know, when he told me that, I'm like, you're full of shit. <laughs> I didn't believe him. I'm like, well, see, I would have been like, how the fuck do you know? <laughs> yeah, that was my second statement. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, oh my gosh, it's so funny because I'm like, what is, I don't even know what that is. But then you look at the packaging and you see, yeah. like, <laughs> and all then, over the place. <laughs> yeah, you see all that and you're like, okay, you you guys are dirty. I like and it. it says right underneath the, the photo right here, it says, go ahead and get some in your mouth. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're gonna have a little little lesson today. Um, this is you have to go to Urban Dictionary and you have to press the sound button. Like you have to listen to. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, you just have to do it. So bukake, bukake, whatever, is a noun variety of fetish that involves repeated ejaculation on a female by many. Eight will do men. Um, to ejaculate on something, especially repeatedly, uh, turn off your stereo or I will bukkake on it. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot more there that you can read that is super funny. You just have to do it. Um, so obviously this coffee is, um, it is so good that I, sh go ahead and do it. It's fine. <laughs> Oh, oh my god, I love this coffee. <laughs> That's what I'm drinking right now because oh, it's amazing. I I love it. And the smell of it, holy shit. Oh my god, I know. It is delicious. And like Melissa had said earlier before we got on here, your whole house smells like this all day long. And it is a wonderful sense. It's, um, it's with maple spice and a taste of Caribbean rum. Mm -hmm. It is so good. Like, <laughs> I cannot wake up or wait to wake up in the morning just to have this coffee. And I've never been that excited to drink coffee in my life. <laughs> like, I want some of this coffee. And I have very little in here, like enough for maybe one more pot or a half a pot, and I'm going to be really sad, so I'm going to have to order some. But this is by far one of the best coffees I have ever had, ever, in my life. Uh, and <laughs> drinking this coffee, or any of their coffees, actually, um, like the 357 Meg and then the one that we did before, which was Bitch Slap, Drinking these coffees and then going back to regular coffee really fucking sucks. <laughs> Real. It, is so it really sucks because regular coffee to me now tastes like dirt. It yes. Yeah. It does. So I need like a huge like five gallon bucket of these beans right here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If it's caliber, right? Yes, caliber. You if you're gonna watch this review <laughs> You need to make a five-gallon bucket of this coffee, and I will buy it all up. <laughs> right? Oh my gosh! It's so true. Oh my gosh! Whenever, see, I didn't. I got the beans in a plastic bag. I didn't get the, you know, in the actual bag. So Robert and I sat there and argued for like 20 minutes over what it smelled like. I was like. Pancake. It smells chocolatey, but not quite. It's just really sweet. And of course, I was there. I had my face <laughs> in the bag, and the whole car, because we I opened that up as soon as I got it from the post office. So the whole car smelled like it for like three days. I swear I need to put like a few of the beans in a baggie, right. <laughs> like in like oh a little God. belt bag, and hang it. <laughs> oh, it's better than any car freshener ever. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. So I went there arguing over it. I was like, well, and he thought it was hazelnut. I'm like, no, no, it's not hazelnut. I said, this is almost, I was like, this is just really good. It's so almost rich smelling, you know. And so we made, like, we got home and made a pot of coffee. <laughs> I think it was like four in the afternoon. We didn't care. And the whole house smelled like it forever. And like your hands smelled like it forever. It's like the scent stuck with you. <laughs> and it was so good. And I just put, um, and I believe Scarlett had said the same thing, um, just put some sugar in it. I don't use creamer, and that's not like me. I like, I'm sorry, my cat is being a demon hell bitch behind me. Just ignore her. Um, <laughs> my, I, I don't like, um, usually I just put creamer. 
like sweetened creamer in my coffee. I don't really put sugar, but I tried it with just sugar, no creamer, and it was amazing. Like it is really. I'm with Scarlett on this one. The best coffee. This is my favorite. You know, it is my absolute favorite. Coffee bukkake. Coffee bukkake. Is it cafe bukkake or coffee? coffee. It's coffee. 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 Oh. coffee. Um, okay, so... <laughs> you need to read what's on the back, though. <laughs> I, okay, so this... I'm going to read from the website. I don't know if... It, I can't remember if it's the same thing on the back. Um, okay. But <clears throat> this is how they have on the website. Uh, coffee Bukaki is spewing fantasies all over the place. Our stuff may be warm on your face, but it is tasty in your mouth. Featuring a specialty blended coffee with superb maple spice flavor and a taste of the Caribbean rum. This coffee will get you down on your knees looking up and saying more, more, more. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Pretty much, they're coffee. totally right. <laughs> so right. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's so good, though. Oh, my gosh. It tastes like... And it is so potent. Like, I have it sealed up, and still, it's, like, everywhere. That scent, and I don't care. Like, I like that scent. It reminds me of, like, breakfast. So it would be great to have, like, if you have, like, waffles or pancakes or, you know, some shit like that, you know, have it with breakfast, have it by itself, have it shit for dinner. I don't care. But it is so delicious. If you have not tried it, you have to try it. And if you try it, you have to let us know because... And it's nice. And and what I, because I was running low, I'm going to place the order soon, um, but I was running low, and so what I did was I mixed the coffee bukkake with the 357, so I got the beans, and I put probably like three of uh, the coffee bukkake and uh, two scoops of the 357, blended it. Um, it tastes wonderful. Like it's 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 a great blend. You have that nice like maple spice um, of the coffee, you know, um, and, and you have the 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 potency and, and the strength and that energy from from uh, the 357 mag, uh, and it blends well. And so it's delicious. It's super delicious. Uh, and uh, and to take it. Because obviously we are uh, witchy minded, so to take that, like after you grind those beans, you can actually use the coffee grinds in craft work. And if you use the co obviously taking the description of coffee bukkake, you can actually um, use that for many reasons. But it's so good, like it makes you want more, <clears throat> like instantly. You don't care if you're full or whatever, you want more, and you want it all over. So that would be, it would be really good to simulate like attraction, to, to simulate that energy. To you know, you have someone and the set. Like the set is so, yeah. It's it is good. amazing. Like I can't get over the smell. Honestly, I've never ever had coffee that I opened the bag and it permeated my whole house. Oh. Not before it even wrote like rude. I mean, it's uh, just the beans. Yeah, and I will have to say, as uh, Scarlett is so right. Ooh, this fucking hair of mine, shit. Um, she's so right when you, because I had to do that. Like, I was running low, and I was saving this for the show. So I'm like, I have to wait. I can't, you know, use this up for the show. i got to be, like, drinking up in here. Um, so <laughs> I had Starbucks coffee. Uh, like a whole dark rose that I normally really, really love, and it was good. But going from Coffee Bitch Slap, going from the 357 Mag and Coffee Bukaki, um, going from all of those back to the Starfax, hmm. I was like... Oh, disappointing! I'm it like, is this is rude, rude, rude. <laughs> like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this now? This is bullshit. Like, I am... Oh, no, I'm becoming a coffee snob. <laughs> But, you know, I'm like, shit. I'm like, this is not okay. It tastes horrible. It tastes like an ashtray. Like, it was just not okay with me. And then I'm like, well, they sold me, assholes, being bastards. <laughs> they so did. 
And and I love it. I really I really do. And I think that y'all should try. You really should try it and let us know. Um, but I'm not even joking. I'm very picky on on a lot of things. But so far, so far, everything that I have tried from the company has been really really good. I'm gonna actually get some more and try different ones. Yes, um, and they have something. I was on their website. They have something. Uh, they have spicy nuts. <laughs> oh, that sounds interesting. No joke. I'm just gonna have to start buying my coffee from there because, you know, it's like I said. I just can't. I got um, Starbucks like Colombian dark roast or whatever. That's the kind of coffee I buy regularly, and it. You're right. It tastes like. Crap! It just yeah. tastes like the dredge. I'm running out. Scrape off the bottom of the barrel. Right. I'm gonna have to get this though because well, these are actual like they're nuts. It's <laughs> I'll read this to you because it's so funny and I think it just expresses a lot of you know about the company. Like they're fun and they're funny and I don't know. I just there's something I just I so appreciate about that. This is called spicy nut slap. Spicy peanuts. Get get your nut on. Spicy and delicious. You'll feel them in your throat. <laughs> I love that. That is too funny. I just love their descriptions. I love that they're a company with a sense of humor. There's not too many out there like that. No. And I just find it hilarious. You know, I'm sure that if some people really, you know, who may already be addicted to uh, coffee bukkake, <laughs> they um, pro may or may not know what it is, and I don't even care. It the name does not affect the fact that I love the hell out of it. In fact, I think it's hilarious that they name their coffees like that because it's just awesome. I know it's like it just makes me want more. <laughs> I'm like it makes me laugh every time I drink it because I I get the whole conversation like what does that mean? Well, I'm like oh, <laughs> but. You have to see the picture of the spicy nut slap. I'll, I'll send it. But it's super funny. Um, so again, y'all, that is our lovely review of the Caliber Coffee 357 mag. And Melissa, go ahead. What was the other one? Coffee Bukaki. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was hilarious. So we looked up how to pronounce it, y'all, and, you know, they did a great job, but it was like some creepy little girl. Yeah. <laughs> and that just made it so weird. <laughs> right. Okay, so um, that was a copy. It's not the fault of this coffee company. No. That was Google. <laughs> no. That was Google. Yeah, that was clear. Good <laughs> um. point. Can you imagine if the the actual company did videos on their products? Oh my god, they need to. They need to have commercials. I know. Well, we, yeah, <laughs> that'd be funny. Uh, so okay, so we have that. Um, I put links in the in the description. So check that. Check the coffee out. Super yummy. You have to. You just have to. Um, our next is my one of my favorite decks. Like honestly, uh, and that is Ludi. Hello, <laughs> Flutie Lescott. This deck, mm, this deck is fucking awesome. Like, it is so, it's so, oh, it's just great. I think it's a perfect combination for for the coffee we just talked about. Um, it because, really is. Because, <laughs> Because Ludi Lescott, the deck is very uh, sensual, it's very sexual, it's very primal, raw. Um, <clears throat> it has a very potent and powerful uh, energy about it. Um, and <clears throat> I was telling, you know, I was telling Scarlett and Melissa earlier, like, I, I'm i always losing my fucking book. Like, this is the only deck that I really, really love the meanings. Uh, one of the only decks, I love the meanings of, of the cards that that Ludi Lescott deck has, and I'm always losing it. And they're super simple. They're very, um, I don't know, there's just something about how they express the meanings that 
kind of triggers not just the witch in me, but the the artist, the the poet, the you know, it, it has a, that way of you know, uh, oh my god, triggering that that expressive nature. Uh, and I'll just uh, read one or maybe two, like the tower card. Um, the tower card, they say, close your eyes and make a leap of faith. Reopen your eyes and you have been reborn. Uh, super simple. Um, another, let's see, let's do... Well, I like this one. This one? The devil? Oh my gosh. Uh -huh. Yeah, that one says, do not lose your virginity on a bed of bones. I have that one. Actually. And subterfuge baptized love, they will enslave you forever. Yeah. I have that deck. I have that card out too. I was gonna show it. Like I'm like, this is one of my favorite cards out of the deck. Uh, that's funny. And you can obviously you can see um, if you're offended by such things, such as you know the fucking body, uh, then you probably don't want this deck. But if you're not, you know, a prude. Um, I mean, no judgment here. It's just whatever. So you shouldn't get the deck if you if you, if this shit bothers you. Uh, but it is beautiful. Like the imagery. Um, this right here is one of my favorite cards as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I just had that one out, too. Yeah. It's one of my favorites as well. It's so fierce. I just love it. And there's and there's a lot of, like, skin in the deck, and I feel like there's power in that. Like, when you're exposed, like, you have nothing to hide, and I think and it makes people uncomfortable as well. Like, when you are bare, you know, you have, like, you can't hide anything, so... You're bearing yourself to the world, and and you're exposing yourself, and in a sense, like they're they they don't know how to take that because you have nothing to like uh, hide behind, and, and that is something very powerful, and I think that's something that the deck like truly offers. Um, my coffee is totally kicking in, so if you see me like shh, <laughs> uh, that's why. Um, I but, like these two, um, the two of cups. I mean, it's, they're not naked or anything, but she's wearing, like, a nighty, you know, and she's showing mm -hmm. some upper thigh and all that, you know, and then twos obviously means, you know, um, a connection, a partnership of sorts. And then I also like this one. This one is um, the... Oh, I have that. Oh, my God. The four. Yeah, I have that one out, too. <laughs> or, no. Is that right? Yeah, it's the magician. The ma okay, okay, yes, magician. Okay, I'm like, wait, that's not the fool. <laughs> I know what the fool looks like in this deck. <laughs> anyway, you know, normally other cards you see the magician by himself, or maybe even with animals. And this one is surrounded by women that are on their hands and knees, moving towards him. So, like Michael said, it's a very primal very sensual deck, and if you are uncomfortable with the body and what we do naturally with our bodies, <laughs> then it's not the deck for you, but it is a, I love the imagery in this deck. And just like that, that imagery right there, the magician, um, I, I think that totally expresses the nature of the entire deck, because that shows... Like, you know, usually you have a magician card, and it's just, you know, him with, like, a bunch of fucking tools. Uh, but with, with the Ludi deck, there's other people there, and, and I think that, to me, that's very witchy, and it brings a sense of community. Like, um, you know, what you do, what the magician does is an extension and, and a co-creation of the, the people he surrounds himself with, and I feel like that's what the deck, like, really expresses is, like, it's not just the witch his or herself. It's, you know, how the witch engages with, you know, the world around them, the world inside of them. And this deck expresses so well the the way we tie energies in um, and how to bring different influences in and, and create something. Um, I, it's, oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh, it is amazing. Also, when I look at this card, you know what I think of? Hmm. The witch father. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's like, you know, obviously the head guy and these women, which mostly look like women, yeah, 
women, which it can also go with the witch father. It's both sexes. You know, they crawl to him. They they want to be in his presence. They want to be around him. So every time I see this card, that's who I think of. Mm -hmm. Oh no, <laughs> coffee, who <blue> coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. And you know, um, this is another one of my favorites, the High Priestess, which to me, this deck more than most really captures her ferocity. You know, she is fierce. I I've always felt the High Priestess is very fierce. And in this deck, she just looks fierce, seductive, and has that whole, you can approach me, but if you're wasting my time, I'm going to bite your fucking head off. Right. Um, yes, yeah. and 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 the uh, the coloring is obviously a little darker. Um, the imagery is darker, but it's it's very it's light. It's realistic, and, and it's just this is just life. But life is about you know the ups and downs, the challenges, the suffering, the the positive and uplifting. And I think this deck uh, captures that really well. Mm -hmm. This is the Ten of Swords. And this image right here is extremely powerful. Um, you can see Ten of Swords usually means huh, done. It's the end. Like, there is no, it's just final. Um, and obviously there's death here. And there's someone who's uh, influenced by this and so, like, heartbroken because of what just happened. But, and you can see just how, like, when you see the images of the cards in this deck, you're just automatically overcome with, so much like emotion, or it reminds you of something. It just it's a it's a strong deck to pull from like deep down, you know, in that space where you not you don't always want to like you know enter. But it's one of those decks that are necessary. Um, the card sock is awesome. I, I like it to me, honestly. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Go ahead. I'll wait. The card side, I actually enjoy. Normally, I do not like flimsy cards, but the way that this is done, like, it, it even though it's, like, flimsy, like, it's, it's flimsy, it still feels like it's not going to fucking, like, just break or, like, you know, uh, it's too flimsy. It's, like, that, it's that perfect combination where it's, it's, uh, a, <laughs> why do I have, damn, coffee stuck in my head. It's stiff enough. But it's also flexible enough where it's easy to shuffle, um, yeah. and I I appreciate that about this, uh, which I'm not always happy about like really flimsy, flimsy cards. But this one, this is perfect for me. Like I like the way it's blended perfect. So uh, when you shuffle, it shuffles well. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about how it's sort of a dark deck, and the to me the most colorful card in the whole deck. It's the Judgment card. It is, like, super colorful, and that, to me, is so interesting because if you look at other decks, the Judgment card is usually kind of dark. And yeah. in this, you really get the sense of, as much as you see, you know, everyone looks the same. You know, everyone's shaved heads. Everyone's got the dots, you know, on the back of their head and all that. Everyone looks the same, but it just doesn't feel so dreary. It doesn't feel so final because right. it's so like bright and even though they don't look happy, they don't look sad either. There's just people walking, you know, and you just don't get that overwhelming sense of dread like sometimes you can from the judgment card. Right. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Just at how, because you know, you would think like the sun card would be uber colorful and it is to an extent but it's still pretty dark. Clowns are fucking creepy. They are. <laughs> look at that shit. Rude. But look at that. This card is, like, awesome. So there's a lot of interesting um, information in, in, in the cards. And uh, I really, I just, I love it. It, it pulls out uh, from the reader some very uh, unique perspectives. Uh, and I feel, and, and honestly, this deck for me um, is really great to read for any witch. Um, it's it's really good to utilize in, like, I was just going to say sexual dysfunction, but, and, and, and truly, it can be, like, it's good to use, like, with people 
um, if you're doing healing work and you need to like kind of like heal beliefs or or work on beliefs in regards to being comfortable in your own body, um, like sexual healing, uh, healing from like in, in, in a relationship status, um, this deck it helps you to be comfortable in in yourself and. and it, it really does show confidence, and the card, the cards, and the imagery help to promote like independence and and to find that power center within. Yep, I love the way the women, the queens especially, not to be all like women power, but I really do love the way the queens are portrayed. They are so like. Fierce and just confident, and bam, you know, <laughs> this yeah. is mean. I'm in my seat of power, and y'all fuck off, you know. Well, it, yeah, and I think that um, <clears throat> that is another thing that I appreciate about the deck because it's not necessarily saying, you know, the king has more power, the queen has less power, or the king's up here, the queen's up here. It shows that, in, in truth, like the king and queen are equals. And, and they have, like, the same amount of influence. And, and because you can see in all the Queen cards that they hold, like, almost the same energy um, and, and same positioning as the King. And, and if not, maybe even more at times. But that's another thing I appreciate. Because some of them, like, tend to make the, you know, the King here, the Queen here. But that this deck does not really do that. And, and I, I like that. Is there anything that you don't like about the deck, Scarlett? No. <laughs> no. And I... What I really enjoy about it is the facial expressions are very clear and easy to read. I mean, if somebody's in pain, it shows. If somebody is sad or mourning or distraught, it shows. If they're happy, it shows. If they're worried, it shows. It's no, there's no guessing game on looking at these decks and wondering what the hell is going on. Because I know there's decks out there like that that you look at it and you're like, what the hell? Like, I'm not getting shit out of this deck or this card. But these are very clear on what they're expressing. Yes, I completely agree. Here, and even, like, here. Like, you have three figures here. And even the figure in, like, the background, you can see, like, a distinct facial expression. Mm -hmm. And seeing her, she's like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, God, don't see me, don't see me, don't see me. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, shit, coffee bukkake is going to become literal. <laughs> <laughs> and I like this one. This is the Four of Swords. I was just looking at that one. Normally is, you know, like building a house, a, you know, a foundation, a home. But with what she's wearing, it's easy. Well, I mean, four of wands is easy to remember anyway. But this is, if you didn't know, I mean, I just think that looking at this one, you would know. Because her bed is there in the background. And then what she's wearing, it looks like somebody, you know, like, a new bride would wear for her husband on right. their honeymoon. So, mm -hmm. yes, it's see-through. Yes, you can see your butt, but, you know, <laughs> who cares? You know, we all have them. <laughs> but <laughs> it just, this, building the foundation of a home and all that, yes, that comes to mind, but it's just, this to me represents even more of a newer beginning to go towards that foundation. Right. She looks like a bride on her honeymoon night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I was just looking at that card thing in the same thing. Huh. Oh, my. I don't think there's anything I... There is nothing I dislike. I, there really isn't. I can't say there's anything I find negative about the deck. I mean, I am grateful. The only... It's not even anything negative. I wish... For, because for some reason, I just can't get it out of my head, but I wish it would label, like, the majors. That's exactly what I was um, about to say. Yeah, I can't always remember, you know, what Roman numeral goes with what. <laughs> I know, so that's my own, and it's not even, like, it's not a deal breaker. That, to find, that be the only thing, wow, I can't fucking talk. 
But for that to be the only thing that I find negative, like not even negative, but that I find challenging or something like that I'd point out, that's nothing. But this deck, you just, oh, it's necessary. It's necessary to have. And and I love the, you know, the card stock's great. The imagery is great. I'm so glad, like the borders, not too, that's not too thick. And it doesn't have shit all over them. Right. God, I hate it when they have, like, what they are in every damn language around the ed outer edge. To me, that just is so distracting and takes I, away. I do like that they have, like, the pentacles, the air, the, the symbols on top. Uh-huh. That's pretty cool because then that gives you something to, like, you know, focus on. Um, and and this card, you know, the ten of pentacles, ten of coins, whatever, you know, you think of or I do, um, but the family having everything that they need, you know, um, not just material stuff, but they have all that they need. In this card, though, you know, the, the wife is in the background with the child, and the man, he oh, he's opening like a treasure chest, and he almost looks like he's surprised, and it's almost like, what the fuck, you know? And I think it's it, this card to me means that they have everything that they need, or they're going to have everything that they need. But with his surprised look, it to me it means more like maybe an inheritance came their way. Right. Yeah. You know, like unexpected inheritance came their way because he looks surprised, shocked, like what the hell is this? And mm -hmm. his wife and child are in the background, and now he's going to be able to give them what they need and what they want. Right. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, this deck is necessary, and I'm trying to think like it again. Card sock is is perfect. Coloring is nice. The the expression of of each you know figure and each card is wonderful. The the meanings of it in here are even better. Um, there. <laughs> Again, nothing negative to say about the deck. I want more. Like, I love this deck. Um, is there anything else that you all want to say about the deck itself or uh, anything like that? I can't think of anything else. I think we said, everything was said. I love it. That's, that's, that's the big thing. I really enjoy it. And I've had this deck um, not as long as... Scarlett and Michael have had their deck, and I just immediately was just like, oh my gosh, I just love this deck so much. It is so much fun, and very good for, like, working on yourself. You know, really getting to know and understand yourself. This deck will bring out some stuff, and you're just like, wow, I never even looked at it that way. I need to delve into this more. And that's one of the big um, impressions it's made on me so far. And even the back art is amazing. I know. I just love that. It's super delish. And even if you're not into reading tarot or you're, you're just beginning or maybe even don't have any interest, I think this is a good deck to have because the definitions in here, to me, they're not definitions. To me, right. it's she's giving you a new way of thinking. She's giving you a new outlook on your situation, and it's almost in like it's almost like poetic. And mm -hmm. if you're good at with poems, and I'm not saying writing them, but at least understanding them, then you'll understand these meanings and. I think it helps you to, if you read it, even if it takes you a few times to read that definition, you start to break it down into what it means and for your situation and how you can handle it and how you can come out of it or make things better and, yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not like any of the other decks. That's it's right. not. Like, okay, whenever I think of the star, I think of sort of a guiding light, you know. There's several th different things that come up when it comes to the star card. But I'm just going to read what the, she says in this. It's, Wash the blood from your hands. Let the dawn rise on something pure. 
you have the right to receive everything that is good in the world. And that is just a completely different take for me right. on the star card. And it just kind of blew my mind. A well, little. yeah. And, you know, to not to, you know, prolong the entire show, but to support what was just said as well, um, this is a perfect deck for artists, for creators, for people who not, you, you don't have to read the deck. You could utilize the deck to inspire you to paint. Uh, it, it, to to write to it, whether you're writing poetry, uh, book, um, uh, film, like doing film, uh, whatever it is, these cards they have the the imagery and, and the potency to inspire and trigger something. And just by reading the what what is laid out in the book and looking at the card, it will it will connect with you and it will help you to. Put that in, on paper. Put that on canvas. Whatever it is, even in music. Um, so yeah, this definitely is not necessarily a deck for people who must use it to read. It's a great deck to utilize for any type of artist. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So yes. Um, so rock then. Uh, 357 Mag is wonderful. Uh, you have to check that coffee out. The coffee. Coffee what, Melissa? Bukaki. <laughs> yes, that one is delicious, and you have to check that out as well. And y'all, if you do, please like let us know. Uh, I want to know what you think about it as well. Uh, and then the Ludi deck, you have to get that. It's so wonderful. And if you work with it already, um, you know, comment on the video and let us know what you think about it and how you like it, or if there's anything you don't like about it, uh, because that'd be cool to to hear as well. Um, and don't forget, uh, both Miss Scarlett and Miss Melissa, they put out um, newsletters today. So I'll put that in the description of the, of the video. But check out their newsletter. Subscribe to them. Uh, they got some really cool shit going on. Uh, and in mine, I interviewed Michael. That was a fun interview, so you need to look at that and find out what he has coming up, because I'm excited. Oh, shit. It's Watch it. out. <laughs> okay, y'all. So, and it, oh, one more thing. If there is a tarot deck, or even an oracle deck, or whatever, a deck of cards, because we are addicted, um, if there's a deck that you would like us to review... Let us know. And if there's, like, a coffee that you would like us to review, I think we need to start reviewing the wine eventually. Shit. But, um, if, if yeah, there's a coffee that you, Yeah, right? Uh, so if there's a coffee you'd like us to review that you're not sure of and you want us to try out, uh, let us know, and we'll, we'll, we'll try to accommodate. Um, but until next time, have fun. Peace. Bye.